After playing Trackmania Nations Forever, I wanted to try another game in the series to see what kind of things would be added or changed since 2008. Initially, I was going to play Trackmania 2020 because it was free for the basic subscription model as well as being the newest game in the series, but then I saw that Trackmania Turbo was half off and I had a $10 Epic coupon for downloading Rocket League, so I ended up getting the game for just 10 bucks. In my video on Trackmania Nations Forever, I almost exclusively played the single player mode, but with Trackmania Turbo, I'm gonna give the online mode a fair shake since it's such a big part of the game for veterans of the series. I'm going in completely blind and know almost nothing about this game, besides the fact that people on the internet told me I should play it since it was one of their favorite games in the whole franchise. I also switched my key bindings to steer with the arrow keys and break with the shift key which would have been a lot better than switching between arrow keys and WASD which is what I did in my last video. This is why I reassign the keys to WASD and arrow keys. Basically, I should be a professional now, since I watched a speedrun of Trackmania Nations forever and learned what bug sliding is. With my credibility established, let's get into the gameplay. Trackmania Turbo looks super clean with a sleekly designed menu screen and a style of its own. This game feels like a fully fledged experience compared to Trackmania Nations forever. The graphics here are amazing with an all new lighting system and landscapes surrounding each of the tracks being unique to each race type and the cars are distinctly designed based on how each of them handles. Wait, hold up, did I read that right? There's four cars? Uh, yes Keenan, there are four cars. That's what sequels do, they add things to their games. But like, I'm only used to racing one car, how am I supposed to handle four cars? Well, you have to learn how each car handles so you can use them effectively. Man, that's crazy. I only want to learn one car. It's not that hard as long as you put in the time to learn how each car handles. Here, let me break it down for you. There are four race types. Grand Canyon Drift, Down and Dirty Valley, Lagoon Roller Coaster, and International Stadium, with each race type having a different car that handles differently to the rest of them, as well as different surfaces that you have to figure out how to navigate. The car in the Grand Canyon drift tracks feels weighty and you definitely have to get used to its tipping point to know how far up on two wheels you can go. There's even tracks centered around the tipping point, like in Green Track 45. <laughs> Holding out a drift and hitting the apex of a corner feels so good when you finally nail it. There's a learning curve with this car of figuring out which corners you can grip versus which corners you have to drift around so you don't lose time. The drift track's surface is mainly concrete so you can just try and perfect your drifting line, but occasionally the surface will change to dirt for a bit to try and throw you off what you had initially planned. The Down and Dirty Valley car is an off-roading buggy. It's definitely more twitchy than the drift car, but just as weighty. In these courses, you'll mainly be dealing with dirt tracks with some concrete and water thrown in. Getting the car to go in a straight line on dirt is extremely difficult to do with any sort of confidence, and I always felt like I was teetering on the edge of control. Its drifts on concrete are very tight, but you do lose much more speed compared to the drift car, so drifting is only necessary on the tightest of corners. Next up is the Lagoon Roller Coaster Races. This car is insanely fast. It's so grippy and feels like it's locked onto a rail when you're turning. It's super twitchy, light, and accelerates really fast. The tracks are centered around these roller coaster tracks, hence the name, and are equipped with these gravity boosters that stick you to the track similarly to in Mario Kart 8's gravity sections. Although you can drift, you have to know when to use it since this car likes to go forward and forward only. I do have to say that this is certainly the most entertaining car to crash in though. The last race event is the International Stadium Races. This car is basically just the car that Trackmania is known for, the track car clearly inspired by an F1 car. 
These races were obviously the most similar to Trackmania Nations and probably what most Trackmania fans know. The car is a bit more weighty and less twitchy than it was in Trackmania Nations, but I think that helps to spread out the diversity between all four cars. You really have to know your racing lines in each track as well as how fast you need to go in order to make your turns because the steering radius is pretty shallow. The majority of the time it's better to just slow down and take a turn than try and drift it so you can maintain your line, unless it's clearly meant to be a drifting turn. Out of all the cars, the drift car is probably my personal favorite just because of the satisfaction you get when nailing a drift. Although every car was distinct and fun to control in its own way, so I'm sure every player will have a different preference. The core gameplay loop in the Trackmania games is so strong because the difficulty is centered around self-improvement and understanding of the game's mechanics and nuances. While technically most games are centered around self-improvement, what Trackmania does differently is by giving players such simple controls, with just the arrow keys and a brake button being the only controls, the difficulty is put on the understanding of each car, surface, and turn, so that every time you fail a turn, you start to learn how you should take that turn next time. There's a feedback loop of learning from your mistakes with every failure. This not only gives players a feeling of improving at that corner or track, but the game as a whole, since they start understanding the nuances of the mechanics. In my last video when I was talking about the four different race types, I said I didn't know what Trackmania could really do to mix up the gameplay. Well, Trackmania Turbo answered that question perfectly. They added three more cars and new track types. Instead of mastering just one car and three different surfaces, now I have to master four cars that each have a unique handling style, as well as all the different course styles and new surfaces added. This game's audio is way better than Trackmania Nations. I really enjoyed the soundtrack and it fit the racing really well. One of the reasons for this is that the soundtrack is linked to your car's speed, so if your car is going really slow, the music is quiet or off, and if you're going fast, the music is loud, which really adds emphasis to the rush you get when you're going fast and the disappointment you feel when you crash or go slow. They added announcers as well, which is a nice touch as they keep you up to date on what number lap you're on and commentate when you crash or go through a checkpoint. You are never gonna make it. Really, nigga? My only complaint with them is that they can be a bit too repetitive with their commentary. After I got gold on all the white series races in the campaign, I decided to check out the online multiplayer to see if it was improved from Trackmania Nations. By improved, I basically mean less crowded and overwhelming. Okay, so this next part I was really disappointed about. One of the main reasons I chose to play this game was so I could see if the online was improved from Trackmania Nations, but it turns out that no one plays this game anymore. The most people I could find to race against at any given time was two other people max. I do have to say though that the UI actually looked like a modern UI and clearly displayed everything worthy of seeing, so props to this game for improving that. Sorry I can't comment on the online side of things, but I didn't think a 4 year old game that Trackmania fans seemed to love would have a dead online. Also, Trackmania Nations Forever had a fairly active online community, so I was really surprised to see that Turbo has no one considering it's 8 years newer. One of the barriers for this game having no one online is that it costs money, whereas Trackmania Nations Forever is free and Trackmania 2020 is free and just came out, so I'm assuming a lot of players are there right now. A few things I didn't touch on was that this game has split screen multiplayer, a mode where two people control one car, and a track editor that I didn't try because I'm not very creative when it comes to making levels and games. I just thought I should let you know that those are there. Apart from the abandoned online mode, Trackmania Turbo is everything you could want out of this franchise. It brought tons of fresh new ideas to the table while still remaining true to its pick up and play but hard to master roots. 
It added new cars, race events, more surfaces and mechanics, a beautiful tropical atmosphere, live commentary, a rebooted UI system, as well as a soundtrack that's worthy of my Spotify playlist. Oh, so the game is good? Yes, the game is good. Good job. If you're still not convinced you should get this game, I do recommend starting with Trackmania Nations Forever since it's free to play and I've actually played that one. Sorry Trackmania 2020. Aww. Even though I'm still new to the series, I know I won't stop playing for a long time. Plus I still gotta check out that online mode. With that said, if this video gets at least, mm, 5 likes, I'll check out Trackmania 2020 so I can finally race online. <laughs> yeah, I've got a pretty low bar considering I'm a tiny YouTuber and my mom and brother like my videos anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching and if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe so you can see more videos like it in the future.